back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lori with Chrysalis Graphic Design. I provide graphic design tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your ideas take flight. This video is part two of a series where we're talking about using color in graphic design. If you missed part one, I'll include it in the card up above and in the description bar down below, so make sure you check that out. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel down below. It really does help me out a lot. I would super appreciate it. Last time we covered the basics of color, pretty much color 101. Today, we're gonna talk about color combinations to use in your graphic design projects, as well as really take a deep dive into the website Adobe Cooler. This website is a great free resource and has some amazing features that we're gonna walk through together. So let me grab my tea, we'll head over to the computer, and let's take a look. All right, got my tea, a little caffeine. Uh, let's jump on the computer and take a look at the Adobe Cooler website. All right, so to access Adobe Cooler, all you need is your internet browser. You're going to type in color.adobe.com and you'll get to this website. We're gonna switch over to the screen capture now so you can follow along and see all the features that we're gonna cover. Okay. So here we are at the site, color.adobe.com. You start out at the main color wheel tab, and there are some others here that we'll cover later in this video. Right here in the center, you have the main color wheel. Along the left side here, you have all the different color combinations or options that you can experiment with on the wheel. There on the very bottom left is your color mode selector. It's set to RGB by default, but you can change it to CMYK or some other ones if you need to. This is really useful if you're choosing colors for your designs. Pro tip, remember to design in the color mode of your final piece. RGB for digital or CMYK for print. Your current color palette will be displayed here in the upper right. Now let's talk about choosing the best color combinations to use in your designs. The first and most basic is complementary. These are colors that are direct opposites on the color wheel. So red and green, purple and yellow, and blue and orange. As you can see, the way you push and pull these color points will shift the palette below, but the white line stays completely straight. Next, we'll look at split and double split complementary. You can probably figure out how these work. They're going to split one or both sides you can see that the split complementary splits the red side into two and keeps the green steady. When we shift to double split complementary, both the reds and green sides split off that straight line. This option is going to give you a very diverse color palette, but be cautious in using it, especially with some of the more intense colors we covered in the part one video. That's a pro tip. 
The triad color combo is just what it sounds like. The color points are evenly distributed in three parts of the wheel. Just like the double split complementary, this can produce a very diverse color palette, so use it carefully. A monochromatic color scheme is a great way for beginners to start playing with color and designs. This color palette includes tints and or shades of just one color to produce a range that is easy to work with and pleasing to look at in almost any design. Analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. This color combo is similar to monochromatic, but the colors will have slightly more variety since they incorporate neighboring colors rather than just one hue. We'll touch on square and compound in a minute, but I wanted to point out that Cooler does have an option here for shades. This differs from the monochromatic option in that the colors will all be darker than the chosen hue, not darker and lighter. Okay, as with the triad, square is just what it sounds like, color points in all four quadrants of the wheel. This will give you just about the widest variety of color you can get, but has the benefit of having sets of complementary colors within it. A compound color combo is when you have one main color and then two colors adjacent to its complementary color. This creates a color palette that's still very pleasing, but with a little bit less contrast. Now for the custom option, you can, of course, move the color points around freely, however you want. For this next section, we're going to grab a free stock photo from Pexels.com. Here's a pro tip. You want to make sure that any photos you use in your designs are purchased, licensed, or free for commercial use. I want to use a picture with vibrant colors, so let's search for fruit. Okay, there's a lot of great photos here. I'm going to choose this picture of the grapes. Yep, these colors will work well for this project. I'll choose the free download in the top right here. Large is probably big enough. Now let's head back to Adobe Cooler and choose the Extract Theme tab at the top left. This will let us bring in our photo and pull the colors out of it. You can either drag and drop your file or select the folder on your computer. Here's the fruit picture we just downloaded. Adobe Cooler imports the image and pulls out five main colors from it to make a custom color palette. You have all the color codes down here. But let's say these color points aren't the ones I want to use in my design. I want to highlight the colors of the grape more. I can take this color point here and drag it around anywhere I want. You can keep adjusting these until you like the palette you have down here. And if you want to use one of these colors in another program, just click on it and the color code is automatically copied to your clipboard. All right, so I've got my color palette how I want it and now I want to save it. I have an Adobe account, so if I'm signed in, I can simply save this palette to my libraries and use it in any of the Creative Cloud programs. I'll name this Grape Color Theme and click Save. When you import a photo, Cooler will default to a colorful theme. But before you manually adjust any of the points, you can try out some of these other options here on the left-hand side. Now, similar to Extract Theme, if you want a gradient rather than individual colors, you can pull that from a photo too. You can see here how you get all of the color codes for each point. Again, you can drag these color points around, so if I want a gradient of only the grape colors, I can just move the points to get the colors I want. Right here, you'll see that it defaults to three stops, or color points, on the gradient, but you can adjust this as well. As with regular color palettes, you can save custom gradients to your Adobe library. I'll call this one Grape Gradient. Adobe Cooler is my favorite website for playing with color combinations, but it's definitely not the only resource out there. Here are a few other great websites that you can use to find color combinations to use in your designs. I'll include the links to all of these in the description bar of the video below. Thanks for joining me on this journey of color. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up, like down below, and subscribe to my channel for more content. I upload new videos every week with graphic design tips, tricks, and tutorials. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's something specific that you would like me to cover or a question that you have. I would love to put together a video covering that and help your ideas take flight.